Hi, I'm Trixie Simons from Sew a Softy, and this is interview number two in my series on tips for teachers teaching kids to sew. And this interview is with Jen Stewart from the Children's Room at the Ansonia Public Library in Connecticut. Now that's a mouthful. Anyway, one of the things I really love in Jen's interview is the tip she gave for a special tool she used in her sewing workshop. And what made that tool even more special was it was something that she remembers seeing in her grandma's sewing basket. Now, let's see what Jen has to say. Hi, today I'm chatting with Jen Shield from the Ansonia Children's Library. Jen recently joined the Global Kids Sewing Party and I'm curious to find out how it went. Hi, Jen. Thank you very much for joining me to chat about your sewing, um, sewing at the library. Can you, uh, do you want to introduce yourself first? Sure. So my name is Jen Stewart, um, and I am the children's librarian at the Ansonia Library in Ansonia, Connecticut. And I've been um, working as the librarian there for almost two years. And before that, I was a teacher. Uh, so I taught preschool um, for a number of years. We didn't do much sewing <laughs> in my preschool class. So, um, so I, I, but I'm blessed and I'm happy to be uh, the children's librarian in Ansonia now. Uh, I'm very content and happy there. Sounds like an amazing job to me. <clears throat> so you joined, excuse me. <clears throat> so um, what was the project you joined with for the Global Kids Sewing Party? So um, we decided to do the <coughs> um, the rabbit project. Uh, quite a happy, yep, quite a little happy rabbit to... Uh, to put out into the universe and um, lots of little happy kids leaving with uh, completed projects, which is always a good, oh, it's, always yes. good. <laughs> it's always good to have that completed project because once it gets home, it very rarely gets completed. One of my sort of aims in any lesson is that project has to go home completed. Agreed. Um, how many kids did you have joining in? Um, for that project, we had uh, 10 kids. Um, and I think I like to keep it between 10 and 12, just because it's hard to navigate more than that when you're, yeah. when you're by yourself. Uh, yes, it's manageable. Do the mums or dads join in or it's just the kids come to your programs? That well, um, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a mix. Um, for this particular program, I had made a gentle suggestion that parents go use other areas of the library, um, because I have found that when I know they mean well, parents oh, mean well, yes. um, but it becomes more of the, like the final product and not the process. Oh. And so, uh, you know, sort of gentle encouragement. That being said, we did have one mom who did stick around and, um, and she was, she lended a helping hand and I was happy to have her. Um, but with her kids project, she was, you know, yeah, <laughs> she was really getting there. I actually had one of my workshops, one of the little kids came up to me at the end and said, could we please not have parents at the next workshop? <laughs> I've had the mums actually take the work from their kids and sew it for them. And it's like, oh my goodness, these poor kids, you got to tell the mums, no, it's not your project. It's the kids. I know. So, I know. It's um, not, and it's not fun. <clears throat> it's not fun for them. And I no, don't know why <clears throat> take the time to go upstairs in our library and read a book or sit down yeah. or close your eyes for an hour. Yeah, exactly. Have you sewn with the kids before at the library? Um, so this was my second project. I am not a, I'm not a crafty person. I don't have, I, I like to think I'm creative, but I don't have the ability to like think out a project, um, like a sewing project. So when like I had the roadmap to it through your your brain did all the work and I just, <laughs> Perfect. I, That's I, just what I, like. to, I just had to implement um so no I I have I've done two of of your projects and uh and I think I'm just going to continue you know going along that route oh I, think I that's did a very good route to go <laughs> yeah <laughs> I did take a um, like a librarian sewing class over the summer last year, and it it afforded me a lot of you know, good information. But it also showed me what I did not want to do, which was pattern making and oh. um, you know the drawing that out. Which I mean, it gives it gets you can be creative, and 
And I, I, I'm assuming that, and this is just a novice speaking, that once you learn how to use somebody else's pattern, you can kind of figure out how to make your own. But I didn't want to jump in making our own and then and then um, having sort of tears. I didn't want tears at the end of it. But I, know, <laughs> I, like, I was feeling tears. frustrated. So, um, so to answer, long story short, yes, I've done this project. I've done two of your projects and both of them have been successful, no tears. So really that's what we need. <laughs> So did you, what were your sort of trepidations or sort of concerns before the class, if you had any before the workshop? Uh, I would say the, the parent thing was kind of a big thing. Yeah. Uh, and then also trying to figure out the age range this time around, because the first time I did it eight plus, <laughs> and then this time I, it fell, this project that we were doing, um, the rabbit one fell on our Christmas break from school. So I wanted to give more, I wanted a wider age range. So I said six and up. And I was sort of nervous about that because our um, fabric shears are rather heavy and, you know, manipulating them around. I, I was a little bit concerned, but it was, I mean, for the most part, we had success all around. Yeah, that's pretty good. Six year olds is a good age to start. But like you say, you know, you often also don't know the abilities of each of the kids and you want to get it done within that sort of time frame. right so, right and and I and just as my teacher mentality is doing like the backwards math that like if you're six then you were sort of three-ish around COVID striking out and you know your fine motor skills you have limited abilities with you may have been had given limited experience with scissors so you know that whole thing so I was just trying to kind of take the temperature and for the most part it worked out pretty well and all the kids I would say, so all the kids did the rabbit in that class they all did the same project yes yep so we all we all did the rabbit although you know there was some variations um in accessorizing <laughs> <laughs> and, accessories and, are very very important yes <laughs> um and skill level obviously but yeah. uh but for that project, we all did the rabbit. Okay, good. Can I ask you what supplies you use, like needles, threads? Mm. What did you choose? So <clears throat> I used what we had on hand, which was embroidery floss yep. and uh, and just a like a felt packet that I use for when I um, do my story, like my storyboards, my felt stories. Um, so I just used what we had and the only thing that I purchased extra was a lesson learned from the first time I did the project, which were 50 threaders off of Amazon because oh, the threaders, I, yes. Because I couldn't um I was having a hard time getting them through the eye of the needle. Um, so those were a miracle saver for me. Yes. Um, you know, my eyes are 45. Uh -huh. I can't see that <laughs> well anymore. <laughs> what needles did you use? Um, Timber? well, I used a needle with a, with an eye that was big enough for me to be able to see. <laughs> I have no idea. I just used okay. a sewing needle that I could see through. I know there's probably, I mean, this is like embarrassing, but I know that there's probably sizes. I have no idea what they uh, are. Going to, one hand is the chenille needles, um, a really nice sharp needles. They've got a, quite a large eye and it makes yes. it easier for us and the kids to um, thread. But the, once you have those needle threaders, they're amazing. Yep. Which needle oh, I know. do you remember you, do you use? The I, just bought, I just bought a bulk pack um, from Amazon. They were just metal, like just the ones that I remember seeing in like my grandmother's sewing basket. Just Oh, like little the little, metal. with the little wire on yep. them. Oh, yeah, with really, the wire. Yes, as yeah. soon as you mentioned grandmom, it's got to be one of those <laughs> old yeah wire needle threads and you might have probably needed 50 because they tend to that wire tends they to tend to break yes <laughs> pull too hard they break yep. what yep. sort of problems did the kids have during the workshop and um, well you know I was just so proud of them like oh, for the most so part nice. we were we were on on like point the whole time you know obviously uh a running stitch turns into you know an over the edge yes stitch yes we <laughs> the older children like I would say the 10 and the 11 year olds they would get frustrated and want to like take it out and redo it 
but the six sevens even the eights were i you know just kept going and we just called it character i, just kept <laughs> it I think that's so, great yeah, I love everybody it. needs a little bit of zhuzh and here's <laughs> has it on you know the foot or the ear or whatever so um so i just that's how i sew you know if i make a mistake uh -oh. i I just keep going. <laughs> yeah, I, I tell my kids in the classes, you know, every stitch is a good stitch. You know, you've done yeah. a stitch; it's great. Doesn't need to be taken out. This idea of that perfect is everything looking in you know, even and the same. It's it's definitely overrated. You know, perfect is right. not perfect. So that sounded great. And um, the knotting and how did you do the knotting and the starting with the kids? um you're talking about the French knot like where the eye no, is sorry stuff. when you sorry when you started your your running stitch uh, did you start that with just a knot or did you do a double oh stitch? yes yep so I just we just started it with a knot and then you know we talked about how we want it to be hidden on the inside of the rabbit so it's not seen on the outside and that first stitch you know is a little bit of a, a tricky one and then once you get going it's it's a you know easy peasy once, yeah, you can often start the kids start with quite big stitches, but after they've done their stitching for a while, you can just see it sort of, you know, um, yep. sort of evens itself out a little bit and they get the hang of sewing so quickly sometimes. And I I did a, um, like a sample. And so I did one half of my sample was what I call mouse stitches. So like the smaller stitches and then one was a little bit wider so that you could see like, you know, if you do a wider stitch, which is totally fine, but some of the stuffing is going to kind of pop out here and there. So yeah. you may want to think about doing my stitches so that your stuffing doesn't pop out too. Right. Um, and so that like that visual connection seemed to help everybody wanted mouse stitches. So they did <laughs> oh, very one good. little girl was like, you know, I'm like, you know, uh, you, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's a tiny baby mouse too a little bit like a grown-up mouse <laughs> some of the actually the younger kids do the most amazingly tiny stitches people think that the little kids are going to do like enormous stitches and sometimes they do but right. some little kids so so you know so such small little stitches it's it's very like amazing specific, you know, and and they were very specific <laughs> about it so yeah, it was fine, uh fine motor skills are amazing mm -hmm. what well, what was the, were the kids' reactions to their sewing or their finished sewing projects? Oh, so proud. Just so proud that, like, they made something, right? Because yeah. especially in this day and age where you could just, you know, run to the market or go to the store or click on Amazon and then it's there, like, mm -hmm. to, like, take the time to make something and to create something. So um, they were just thrilled, you know. Somebody, one of the little boys was says, ah, I know why. Um, I know why beanie boos are so expensive now. They take forever to make. You know? <laughs> oh, very clever! <clears throat> I think that's one of the nice things actually about sewing that they've actually got something that they like. Of some of the kids have said in my class, "Look, I've just made something real that they can see yeah. that they can actually do something. They've done it all by themselves, and it's real. It's like so important for kids that they've made something real. So that's one of the things I love seeing at the end." Of, how surprised kids are that they can actually make something and they do right. it by, and they do it by themselves which is really nice because often kids you know there's an adult or teacher or fixing their work or they've got to be the best at something the one thing I like about sewing is there's no competition you know everybody sort of comes out in the end with a project that's theirs that's amazing and there's no better or worse project so one right of it's I special to is. them and it means something to them. And I, one of the little girls who came to the rabbit class had already had come to the class that we did in December. And I said, you know, do you still have the last creation she made? And she said, oh yes, I have it in my special memories box. Oh, so cute. like, that's just so special to me to hear, you know, that it's a treasure, right? That yeah. she made a treasure. Yeah, I've actually had kids in my classes who were like 20, 22, 23, stopped me in the street to tell me they still have every project they made in my workshop. I'm thinking, it's just amazing. It's sort of, you know, it actually meant something quite, was quite special to them that they'd sewn, that they'd made something. So it inspires me to keep on going. Is there anything different you do in your next sewing workshop? Um, 
Well, I think I've, I've put a call out to our high school students who are looking for volunteer hours. Um, I think a couple more hands on deck is yeah. always good. Um, and it's always fun for like the little kids to hang out with the big kids. Oh, yeah. Um, so I, I would say definitely maybe a, another volunteer or two, just because you can't be everywhere. And especially if somebody's in the middle of a frustration and you want to be able to give them the attention um, but without, you know, having to put off other questions that are coming your way, because there are a lot of them. Yeah. And I, I, I readily don't know the answer to all of them, which is why we have a lot of character on our. <laughs> so <laughs> workshops. I've been doing sewing workshops for like 30 years and they're still always really, really hectic. But yeah, you know, it's worth it at the end when you see the kids, you know, leave and they're so proud to show their work. Oh, good. So it sounds like I'm doing it right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> 30 years later, they'll still be hectic. But they're so, so worth I'm exhausted after the workshops because some of my workshops start um, are from 10 to 3. So they're like all day workshops. Okay. And, um, and even though they're all day workshops, the kids go out for lunch for five minutes and they say, okay, can we go back now? They're sort oh, of, yeah, no. <laughs> they don't want to stop. How long actually was your workshop? That you did so we did it for I did it on a Monday and a Tuesday I broke it up so Monday um for two hours and then Tuesday for two hours okay. and I have found that the best way is because you kind of get like um I had kids who had already been to the first one and so they knew what they were doing and they were ready to go and then I had kids who had never done this before at all so the first day I spend making um like a felt bracelet and so we just practice our stitches oh, on yes. the bracelet and then um, in the past, I didn't need it for this one, but in the past it would have, um, we would do button sewing on the bracelet oh, wow. so that you could then, you know, wear it and you could kind of refer back to it for like, oh, this stitch looks like that or that stitch looks like this. Um, so it, it was a helpful guide. So the first day we do the bracelets That's and like then- the preparation and teaching them how to yeah, do Yeah, just to That's like, really you know, to just learn how to do the stitches and, and I have a giant paper plate that I use to do the button, you know, and a big piece of yarn. And I kind of show them how we do the button in and out. And if you make the X or if you want to do two lines or however, or if you just want it to be, you know, a maddening yes, mess, uh, that's fine. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> however you want to do it. Um, so that so the first day is that. And then the and then we usually pick out what colors we want what um if we're choosing a pattern then you know which pattern we'd like to do this the um the last one we did the rabbit one obviously everybody picked the rabbit but there was a lot of choices for colors and then we learn how to cut the cut out a cut out a pattern um I always have extras on hand because then inevitably someone cuts you know an arm I was going to say about that you know the foot gets cut off yeah. Can I just go back to the first day in the workshop when you're doing sure. the practicing. Did you practice threading the needles with the kids and time? Yes. Them? Yep. So we do the whole, we, we start at the beginning um, with what a needle is, what this is, what an eye, this is the eye of the needle, this is where it goes. And, and it's like really basic like as if you've never done it before, because okay. chances are you've never done it before. Right. Yeah, that sounds great. So and, and then, and then we, and then we, you know, teach a few, then I teach a few skills and, um, and the stitches, and then we move forward through the rest of it. And then the second day, we're either, um, if we're not all at that same step, then most of us are usually pinned by then, but if not, then we, then we pin our pattern down, down on the, um, fabric. And that also takes some learning because, you know, especially like six seven they're you know yeah. they've never had a straight pin they don't know what it is they yeah. don't you know um so we talk about you know how to pin and so that to make sure your pattern lays flat on the fabric uh and then and then the cutting and they've never held scissors as sharp as <laughs> that before so um we I do always talk about the you know being economical with our fabric like don't oh, put yes. your pattern in the middle you know <laughs> that's the go-to for all kids right I know. Source, a small circle it's going to be right in the middle of right your in the center, right 
Can't use, I think kids all over the world are exactly the same. They do the same yeah. sorts of things. Well, yeah, and yeah. I can tell you from experience, even like 18 year olds who work at the library doing volunteer and will I'll give them, oh, like a felt project. Like, could you, would you mind cutting these shapes out of felt? And I'll go back the next day and every, <laughs> every, every piece, you know, the square is in the middle. Oh, what is happening? Oh, always. Oh, that's so Doesn't bad. I actually love the way that you actually divide it in two and you prepare everything, get the kids like practicing stitches and threading and needles and explaining everything on the first day. That sounds a really, really nice way of introducing kids to sewing and just making it understandable. And then the next day or the next workshop, they actually start the project. They're really giving them all the really nice basic skills to, um, to learn to sew. Do any of the kids, do you know, of uh, keep on sewing when they go home? Yes. So um, two, two of the girls who came to this class said that they um, got a, uh, in their Easter basket, they had sewing kits oh, that, their, so that nice. the Easter bunny had left them. Oh, they what were, a they Easter were bunny. <laughs> yeah. So the, um, so yes, yeah, so two of them have been taking it up at, at home and, and one little girl's grandmother gave her a sewing machine and I said that is way uh, you could start teaching that class because <laughs> I think you've got some I'm helpers not, not for your, ready for that. you've got some helpers now for your next workshop I yeah think. exactly <laughs> is there anything you would change and you wouldn't do in your next workshop sewing workshop um no I don't think so I mean I think I kind of we talked a bit about like you know the parents or caregivers yes. Um, and sort of, you know, the gentle push. I, yeah. I think I would definitely continue that. And just, you know, maybe an extra set of hands uh, from a volunteer or an assistant. Um, I For the second time around, I had another staff member. So that made a big difference versus the first time that I did it with, with nobody. Uh, so I would definitely say if you're going to do, I'll if you're up. like a novice and you're not a great sewer like myself, you know, surround yourself with somebody who's a little more talented, maybe, and um, or at least just capable, you know, somebody <laughs> who's too and and I will say that I was shocked at the um, ability to thread. Like these kids could once you showed them the tools to do it, then it was I swear they were like dropping stitches just so that they could rethread because they just loved using the threader. It was amazing. Oh, so. So the threaders for you are the essential supplies once they yes, I do, made it. Do not do it. Don't do it without it. <laughs> no, that's great. Because I, I know a lot of teachers, it's the threading and the knotting that they always yeah. find um, difficult. So they've all got to definitely have the needle threaders. Any tricks yep. that you um, had for getting the kids to knot? Um, you know, just I, I, I lay it on the table flat yeah. and then I just, you know, dramatically with that with a piece of yarn I do it yeah. you know and show them you know this is how it's such a simple thing but when they're when they're trying to hold it and you've got your needle and you know you're trying to manipulate it so I say lay it down on the table and just make the loop and then fish it through and pull it and wherever it lands it lands you know yeah. try to get it as close to the end as possible but you know if you're if you're few inches past that no that big deal too doesn't matter that sounds amazing your your workshops sound really really great Jen the kids are really lucky there is there yeah anything, it's fun time is there anything you'd like to add or or I've forgotten to ask um I don't I don't think so I would just I just would like to leave it with if you don't think you can because you don't have any talent I am the most least talented <laughs> person and I can do it. So if I can do it, you can definitely do it. Oh, and, so and I think it's just a matter of breaking the steps down. Yeah. Almost more for myself than it is for them because it keeps me on like, okay, don't get too ahead of myself sort of thing. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's easy to do when you break it down. And that's coming from someone who has <laughs> no talent. Uh, I don't believe the no talent part. After I'll believe it. <laughs> oh no, after hearing how you organize that workshop, it sounds absolutely amazing. <laughs> anyway, thanks. thanks Jen for being my guest today and for chatting and um, hope to speak to you soon again. Thank you. Keep well, on sewing. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> uh, and if you're looking for projects to do with your students, then 
you might want to take a look at the Zenq UA. The Zenq is a simple and creative softies that are great to do with groups of kids. Actually, the Zenkies are the simplest to sew softies in the universe, so you can't go better, to, better than that. And if you want to show your kids some videos about techniques and projects and different things like that, have a look at my other YouTube videos. And if you have a question, please leave it in the comments below. Bye.